This is Evan Abrams for PremiumBeat.com, and in this After Effects tutorial, we're talking about soft body dynamics. That means animating graphics to have a squishy, wobbly, fluid pudding consistency when they move about, like in this intro. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Here in After Effects, I'd like you to have a look at what the intro file looks like. Uh, this uh, white thing and this line are really just to give you a point of reference. And I want you to have a look at uh, these keyframes here. So I have one set of keyframes that are just the position. So that is the position of this shape layer. And as you can see, it comes to rest here, doesn't do anything and then moves on. This is what we might call a sort of primary motion, perhaps, although this is really related to a, a different type of uh, animation principle, that uh, as a large body comes to rest, the rest of it does not. So in this example, we are assuming perhaps that the top and bottom of this object are rigid and its center is sort of a blubbery, flubbery mess. So we have to add in some different uh, parts. So for example, as these accelerate, we have this part uh, sort of lagging behind and it drags as this accelerates. And then it comes to rest here, but then it's gonna snap through and then back and then back and finally resting until again, speed picks up, that part drags behind and is pulled along with it. So what we need to do is come up with a way to realistically mimic this motion that would otherwise be hand drawn uh, using tweens and all that stuff in classical animation, or that would be simulated using what we call real soft body dynamics in sort of a 3D program. But we are kind of coming in the midway point here that we have a shape defined by vectors and uh, we're going to do our best in After Effects to give this rectangle a little bit of personality. So that's really why we do this sort of extra animation that, you know, let's contrast looking at this to, uh, say, removing all those keyframes and uh, having a look at what that looks like. It's like... It's pretty boring, right? So that extra that extra stuff will add personality to whatever you're doing. And it might not be a rectangle. You could apply these sort of fundamentals to any object or any character or anything that you're doing, and you should. So let's uh, start from the beginning. I'm gonna create a new composition and uh, don't worry too much about any of these properties. We're not to uh, going to get too specific about pixels. We're going to talk more about proportion. So what I want to do is call up the grid. So if you've used the grid before, uh, you can change your grids sort of uh, like settings here. You can go into like your grids and guides preferences. You, know, you can change the color of your grid to be, I don't know, like a neon pink if you want. Uh, you can put a grid every however many pixels and the number of times you subdivide that grid. Uh, I'm good with uh, 80 and 4, so that's good. I'm just changing it to pink to uh, really hurt your eyes. So what we're going to do is first draw a shape. So I'm going to do this by going here, layer new and creating a new shape layer or I could start drawing with the pen tool, but whichever way you choose, I'm gonna go view and make sure that I have snap to grid on. And uh, you might wanna keep these shortcuts in mind. Uh, they'll be outlined whether you're on a Mac or a Windows machine right here. So just keep those handy, because you might wanna snap and then unsnap and whatever. So let's get into actually drawing some stuff. Uh, I'm just gonna draw a rectangle. We rectangle drawing it poorly. There you go. So there's, there's a rectangle. Are you happy now? Um, I'm going to stretch these out, make sure they're on these corners. That's important to me. I'm also going to call up the uh, portion grid here um, just to make sure that I'm actually in the center, which, you know, it seems I am not. So I'm going to move these up to here. I'll move these down to here. Cool. I would actually like like it if the grid and the proportion grid were different kinds of lines, like different colors, but you can't always get what you want. Anyway, so I have created this uh, rectangle 
and that rectangle, I'm just going to change the color here uh, to be something contrasting with what we're doing. Something in the blues, I think, pretty contrasty. I still want to be pretty bright so I can see it, but uh, okay. Good, so we've got that, and if we don't look at the grid, it looks like this. So that's, that's great. I'm going to put that grid back on. Uh, because I need to add a couple more features to this. This is a rectangle defined by one, two, three, four points, but because I want the middle to be uh, really jellyfied, I'm going to add a couple of points, and I'm going to move them around. I know I want them to be here right in the center. That's good. So we have all of the points that we're going to need to mess around with this thing. Let's get that grid out of here. We don't want to... Uh, we won't see that anymore. The grid is helpful for drawing things. It can be helpful for animating things when precision is needed. Um, but for us, I don't think we'll need it anymore. Let's call up the position of this thing. And let's do that uh, primary uh, sort of animation that we did. Okay. So I'm going to just move ahead here. I'm at uh, 20 frames. Maybe you don't want to be, but you can be wherever you'd like. And I'm going to start this uh, off screen. So it's, it's over here. It's off screen. We are at... Uh, I don't know, I could put this at minus 100, I suppose, that would work. And then it's going to come into the middle, stick around for uh, a while, and then uh, it's going to mosey along, and it's going to move itself uh, right on out of here. Let's say uh, 2,200, just like that. So already you can see that this is powerfully boring uh, animation, so let's go into the graph editor and spice it up. All right, so let's go to this first one here. Let's easy ease that. What does that mean? You know, mm, not much. Let's drag that handle a bit. So whoop. so we've got kind of a drag and snap kind of thing going. Uh, let's easy ease its way out of this thing uh, so that it's doing a similar type motion and then it accelerates. And in fact, you might want to, you know, speed this along even, or uh, or not. It's totally up to you at this point. But uh, have a look at these dots while we're here. Uh, these dots, when they're closer together, indicate more frames. So it's here, 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 and then there are larger spaces between those dots. Each of those dots is basically a frame of information. So that's what those dots mean. And uh, congratulations, we have our primary animation taken care of. So. Now we are going to animate the path of this thing. So let's look at the contents. Let's look at this shape. Let's go into the path. And here is the path. I'll put a keyframe here. And uh, right here at this point, when it comes to a jarring halt, I'm totally fine with this thing just uh, hanging out right there. I think that's totally well and good. Um, but uh, before that, I want it to be uh, sort of dragging. So uh, since uh, that's the motion we're interested in, I'll look at the path here. I will select a box around these points. You know you have those points selected when they are filled in and the other ones are not. This one is special because this is your first vertex. And I'm going to nudge them holding shift and hitting the left arrow key. Okay, so maybe uh, here at the beginning, I'm gonna copy this uh, frame and paste it so that it starts here with everything's a nice rectangle and eventually it gets to this point and then it's gonna snap in like this. Okay, that's awesome. So I'm going to uh, just go ahead and easy ease this value because it's gonna need uh, some handles on it or like this. And what we want is for this thing to go beyond behind, beyond, behind, and then settle. Okay, so that's easy enough. Uh, we have enough space to give that a go. So let's go ahead, uh, let's grab these, and let's nudge them out this way. So I'm holding shift, and uh, I'm hitting the right arrow key when I'm selecting these to move them all out this way. Um, at this point, you know, it's more or less random what we're doing. We're gonna put these at one second. You know, I'm gonna grab these frames back in the center, and then we're gonna go uh, one, two, three, four, five, six in this direction. All right, cool. Um, copy and paste its static frame here. I'm gonna go one, two, three, four in that direction. Paste that static frame here. I'm go one, two in that direction. And then uh, in the end, it's gonna come back. So 
we've got this way, that way, and and eventually sort of settling down. So that is pretty good so far. Um, I would be interested in having all of these keyframes, though, uh, making them a little bit less angular. So let's go into the pen tool and grab the convert vertex tool. And uh, when you click on them, it's going to sort of do that. And that's not really what we want. So really what you have to do is you have to select this thing, grab your vertex tool, click on the ones that you want to alter, you know, move along, alter them all up. And you really want to alter these ones that are in that static area because you can see on the next frame, the handles shrink down. So here we go, just doing it up like this clicking on them, and you can do this as you're making those frames as well. Um, you know, I find it's kind of time saving to do it this way from time to time, like so, and make sure this first frame has it as well. So let's uh, just hit N here and uh, RAM preview what we've got. So when we look at it, uh, you can see the timing is a bit off. It's a little bit delayed, you know, it's like mm, whoop, whoop. Mm, I'm not, not too thrilled about that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all of these, all these things here, make sure that they are easy eased. All right. Now that's not necessarily very good because this frame here, each easy eased uh, frame, if we look at this speed graph is what we're looking at, the velocity is zero. I don't want the velocity to be zero. I want the velocity to continue on, right? So it shouldn't stop and then accelerate. So this one, let's uh, let's convert this one to uh, Bezier. Let's do that. So it's going to come through, and I would like to sort of speed this up. So this thing uh, shouldn't take too long to happen. So let's uh, speed it up like that. So once you're happy with where one is, let's say uh, this thing takes uh, one, two frames to get there. The next one might take one, two, three, four frames, and then one, two, three, four, five, six frames, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight frames, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten frames maybe. So we space them out in that kind of a pattern. See how that looks. Whir, 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 whir. That actually looks uh, pretty close. So you can see how this kind of a staggered pattern is more in keeping with a decaying sine wave. Hmm? Yeah, a decaying sine wave. It's a little math for you. Um, if you're familiar with something like the inertial bounce expression, that is essentially what we are trying to replicate with keyframes. It can be very difficult to apply expressions to paths in this way. I really wish it wasn't. If you want, for example, a good guide to, uh, you know, how far this should be shaking, you could apply an inertial bounce expression to another object and then use that to guide uh, where you're putting things. That could be helpful. Uh, but really, you just want to look at the path and uh, look at this and think, boom, 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 boom. Is the bounce getting longer? You know, does this make sense? Uh, all that kind of thing. And in the end, does it look like you would expect it to look? So if the answer is yes, then your work is done. So now you know how to sort of conceptually do this kind of thing. There are still, you know, little fine points like, you know, maybe you don't want this to be as sharp a bend here. So you would take, you take these handles and you might pull them out a little bit, you know, to make this a, a more gradual curve. And uh, you might want the front of the curve to always be longer than the back of the curve. So this should always be like, like a pocket and this should be getting stretched out a bit more. You might even want to nudge the leading edge a little bit. Um, so give that a try perhaps. So we'll just expand this leading edge here and then nudge it a little bit, you know, that kind of, that kind of fun activity. So I'm going to expand this a little bit nudge it a little bit. And this will help to uh, really cement uh, that thing. But uh, you just want to make those fine adjustments and get it tweaked to taste. But this is one specific example. 
remember. So we are looking at a rectangle, and this is just so you can conceptually get the idea of how you would apply this kind of a technique to a body in After Effects. So working with shape layers, which are still relatively new in terms of their uptake by people, but I think they're, they're really catching on. I'm joking. These things are pretty great and everybody loves them. So uh, working with these in here, we're able to do things that before we were only able to do in Flash and Toon Boom and stuff like that. So hopefully uh, these types of things are helpful for you. Anyway, this has been Evan Abrams teaching you, I suppose, a little animation basics here in After Effects. Hopefully this is going to be helpful to inspire you for your uh, projects. And uh, thank you for watching this tutorial on Premium Beat. And of course, uh, I'd say stop by Premium Beat for all of your music and sound effects needs. Uh, I'm sure you could find some delightful whoop, 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 cartoony effects. Check out the sections for those. That is really good stuff. And if you want to learn more about After Effects and other applications, I would encourage you to check out Premium Beat and uh, check out the blog, check out the authors section of the other authors in here. And uh, if you want to see more of my work on Premium Beat, check out the authors section. I talk about motion graphics and After Effects almost exclusively. Uh, if you want to see any of my stuff outside of Premium Beat, check out EvanAbrams.com or my YouTube channel, EC Abrams on the YouTube, or hit me up on the Twitter at EC Abrams good stuff out there and uh, yeah if you want to see more of this stuff subscribe to premium beat in all of its forms and uh, i will see you around the internet thanks a lot and have a nice day